Okay, now let's talk about uh, temporal difference algorithms for the estimation of action value functions. So now we are going to talk about Q function instead of V. Um, the idea is the same, exactly the same, but now we need to consider every pair of state and action. The update rule is some alpha of the reward that you will get from the transition gamma times the q value of the next state considering also the next action to be executed minus the q value of the current state and the current action so the transitions are going to be the same from one state you will apply some action get a reward and move uh, to the next uh, state and um, in this case, if S, the next state is terminal, then we will define that the Q value uh, for that will be zero. There are two main algorithms. One is a um, on policy method. This method is called SARSA. And there's another one that we're going to study, which is uh, Q learning. Q learning is an off policy uh, algorithm so uh, remember that in on policy methods we consider only one policy in off policy we will consider two policies and uh, one uh, reason of the name of the reason of, of this name sarsa is because in the learning rule in order to update the value uh, you need the current state S, the action that you will execute, the reward, and the next state and the next action. So that's why they called this algorithm SARSA. So this is a very a good way to remember the learning rule. In SARSA, what you do is uh, you initialize your Q function. So you will assign a value for each of the combinations of the states and actions. So you can initialize them uh, with zero. Then you have a, a for loop here, or a loop. And this loop uh, refers to each of the episodes that you will generate. You requires many episodes. You initialize the state. And then you choose the action to be executed from that state using the policy that you are following. You can implement this using the epsilon greedy policy, for example. And then you have here uh, an inner loop. Once you have selected the action, you will execute that action, observe the reward and the next state. From that next state, you will choose again, using epsilon greedy, the next action that you will perform from that state S prime, using the same policy, epsilon greedy. And now you have all the elements of SARSA needed for the updating rule. So now you can apply the rule with the current uh, value of this pair of state and action, some portion alpha of the reward plus gamma times the Q value of the next state and the next action minus the Q value of the current state and current action. Once you have updated the value for this pair of state and action, you replace and the new state is going to be S prime and the new action is going to be or the current action is going to be A prime and you go again, again and execute that action observe the reward observe the next state you choose a next action from that state and uh, you apply again the rule now for the for the new state and action and this is uh, on policy learning. So this is like the simplest way to apply temporal difference for control in an on policy approach. And this is what we call SARSA. Um, let me go and explain Q learning, and then we, we check those examples of uh, experiments. So in uh, Q learning, 
since we we are applying an off policy method we are going to use two policies the algorithm looks very similar to sarsa and if you look carefully you will see that the only difference in the learning rule is this max and this max will represent the second uh, policy so we will use epsilon greedy to move around so this will be our behavior uh, policy but once we have moved instead of selecting another action the, the, the next action using epsilon greedy we say okay we have reached the state the next state s prime now from this state i will check my table of q values and i will select the action that has the largest q value for that next state s prime so you will say this state and action will take some portion of the neighbor state considering an optimistic view so considering what is the maximum q that i can get from that next state so we follow one policy to behave to move around but we use another a second policy to uh, update the q values that's why this is called uh, an off-policy method. And Q-learning and SARSA are by far the most popular methods of reinforcement learning. There are many other uh, variants in these two methods, but they, they are all based on, on these uh, algorithms. So consider this experiment. Uh, we consider a, a grid world Okay, each of these squares is going to be a state. The agent will start in this uh, S state, this starting state, and it needs to move and get to the goal state, this G state. This is called the windy grid world because um, every time you move to the square, to the next square, according to the wind, this number here, the, the how, how strong the wind is, you're going to be moved one or two squares up. Like in this case, if you move from here to here, instead of remaining here, you will be you will be moved by the wind one square up. In this column, for example, if you move from here to here, you will end up one two squares up. Okay, so this is called the windy grid world for example in the case of sasa you you will get uh, this solution here okay so sarsa learns how you need to move in order to to get to the goal and here is another uh experiment and this is the one in which we can see the difference between sarsa and q learning this is called the cliff walking so you need to go from S to G and every time you move into this gray space which is a cliff you will get a punishment of minus 100 in any other movement you will get only minus 1 so if you implement both algorithms you will see that the path that is found by the SARSA is going to be this let's say the safest path which is going up here moving right and finally going down to the goal state and Q learning is going to find the shortest path but also the uh, most uh, risky path which is just besides the cliff okay this experiment here you can see the rewards that these algorithms got per episode okay here you can see the episodes episode after 100 episodes 200 episodes up to 500 episodes and you can see uh, that Q learning got uh, less reward than SARSA SARSA maximized the reward because 
uh, SARSA is applying only one policy so if SARSA for example wa was working here sometimes given the epsilon greedy policy will uh, fall down and it will learn that it is bad to go just beside the cliff so that policy will move the agent to go far away from the risky side from this uh, squares close to the cliff but on the other hand Q learning will uh, be moving also uh, with uh, epsilon greedy but remember that uh, Q learning updates in an optimistic way so since uh, the agent will be uh, considering the best neighbor state and the best neighbor are these ones then in the end uh, the Q learning will learn the, the shortest path so the, the path that maximized the total return but in the process of learning that it would fall down many times that's why the rewards that Q learning gets during the training is uh, smaller it gets less reward than SARSA because it is very optimistic let's say and it moves very close to the cliff just because uh, it wants to maximize the reward but SARSA just learns very early that it is very dangerous to go beside the cliff and it simply decides to go far away so during the training it uh, receives less punishment let's say but it learns a path that is not the shortest path so in this sense we can say that for this problem Q learning found the optimal path and SARSA found the safest path okay guys so this is all for this topic of temporal difference there are many other methods in uh, proposed for temporal difference but all of them are based on these two main algorithms I hope uh, this is useful I thank you and talk to you later bye